In the previous lecture, we talked about what it means when two numbers are congruent modulo some scale number. In short, if we have two numbers on the number line, two integers on the number line a and b, and if we have a fixed scale, the length of the scale is m, if the distance between a and b can be covered using finitely many, can be exactly covered using finitely many pieces of this scale, then we say that the a and b are congruent and we write it like this. We say a and b mod m. This symbol congruency is very similar to the symbol of equality. So what we will do next is we will compare these two symbols and show that they are indeed very 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 similar in nature. First we will work with three simple properties. They are called reflexive, symmetric and transitive. What does reflexive mean? Reflexive means that every number is related to itself. A relation is reflexive if every number is related to itself. A very simple example of a reflexive property is reflexive relation is equality. Every number is equal to itself. So we can in fact write a equals a. Now let's look at congruency. Is a number congruent to itself? Modulo m, whatever may be the scale. Of course it is because if you look at the number line, if you look at the number line and if you look at a and a, this distance and the scale is suppose this m, the distance between a and a can be covered by this scale. How? Well, we will use zero pieces of the scale. So this is sort of vacuously true. In fact, in more algebraic way, if we look into this, then the question really boils down to whether a minus a is divisible by m. And it indeed is because a minus a is just 0 and 0 is definitely divisible by any number and so it is divisible by m. If you look into this modular structure then all it is asking you to find out whether a minus b is divisible by m or not because if it is divisible by m that means that you can use finitely many pieces of that to this m to cover up this region. So definitely the idea of divisibility of the difference and the idea of this measurement by the scale of m are same. Now let's look into a second property, the symmetric property. Equality relation also enjoys this symmetric property. It means that it says that if a is equals to b, if a is equals to b is given, then we can say b is equals to a. No surprise there. But let's look at this thing, whether, whether this is true for congruency rules or not. If we know that a is congruent to b mod m, if this is known, then does that imply that b is congruent to a mod m? See, pictorially it's very clear that this must be true. Why? Because after all, if this is a and b, and if we are fitting in pieces of this scale m in this space, a to b space, 
the first thing, the first condition says, then we can use several pieces of this M to exactly cover this distance from A to B. Now, of course, the distance from A to B and the distance from B to A are same distance, right? So, exactly those many pieces will be sufficient to cover that B to A distance as well. So, this is definitely true. If you use algebra, then the first condition says that modulus of A minus B, this is the distance between A and B, right? Modulus of A minus B is divisible by M. Divisible by M. But we know that modulus of A minus B is same as, this implies, modulus of B minus A is divisible by M. So definitely this particular second relationship, symmetric relationship also holds. That is if A is congruent to B, let me use a different color, if A is congruent to B, this implies B is congruent to A mod M. And finally, we have the transitive relation. That is, if A is equals to B, B is equals to C, then C is equals to A. Which is obviously true. We can easily understand that this particular relationship this particular property is true for equality. Is it true, however, for congruency? So we want to show to show congruency is transitive. So we know that A is congruent to B mod M and B is congruent to C mod M. Suppose these two are given. B is congruent to A mod M. This is we want to show. You see, pictorially it's actually very simple. Why? Suppose we have three numbers. I'm taking a simplified situation. Let's say we have three numbers A, B, and C. And suppose this is the scale M. Now the first, the given conditions tell me that there will be exactly certain pieces of M. I'm not drawing to scale of course, this is just a rough estimate of the thing. So there are several pieces of M that fills up A to B gap. Again, B is congruent to C, that means that there will be several pieces of M that exactly fills up the B to C gap. So let me use a different color for this. So several pieces of the same M that fills up this thing. Of course my boxes are not of the same size. Ideally they should be uh, because all the M's are same. But you understand what's happening here, right? A to B is filled up by certain boxes of M, certain pieces of M, certain number of pieces of M, and B to C is also filled up with certain number of pieces of M. So you can easily see that this distance from A to C can be, of course, filled up with some number of pieces of M. Just take the number of pieces of M, white pieces, and take the number of blue pieces they together will fill up the difference distance between A to C. Of course, the situation could be a little bit more complicated than this. For example, C could be in between A and B. So if C is in between A and B, we have to think a little bit more. This you can do as an exercise. 
So let me let me write this exercise. If C is between A and B, explain geometrically how C is congruent to A mod M. This is an exercise. Okay, but this will be a little bit more clear if we do this algebraically because it's kind of interesting how it all unfolds. It also will give you a specific technique to deal congruency problems. See, it's given that A is congruent to B mod M. So all that means is that A minus B is divisible by m, right? So that means a minus b is m times some quotient. a to b distance is measurable by m. Of course, that means that a minus b, the difference is divisible by m, which means in turn that a minus b is m times some number q1. Similarly, b is congruent to C mod M means B minus C is divisible by M, which means B minus C is equals to M times some Q2. Now let's add these two equations. So A minus B plus B minus C equals to M times Q1 plus M times Q2. This means a minus C, A minus C, this minus B plus B will cancel, is equals to M times Q1 plus Q2. But that's exactly what we wanted. That is difference of A minus C to be a multiple of M. That's exactly what we wanted. So we can conclude that A is congruent to C mod M. And this obviously by the previous uh, theorem that we just worked on, which said that congruency is symmetric, this implies that C is congruent to A mod M. So see, we have proved three very important properties that are common between equality and congruency, reflexive, symmetric, transitive. If a relationship has these three properties, reflexive, symmetric and transitive, if a relationship has these three properties, then it is called an equivalence relation. Equivalence relation. In our lectures in combinatorics, we work on this idea a little bit more uh, extensively. Equivalence relations are very important in combinatorics and in many other fields of mathematics. They induce partitions in a set and uh, allow us to understand a set in a much more interesting way. Equivalence relations are useful in group theory as well, in advanced algebra. Uh, in the next lecture, we will discuss certain other properties that are common between equality and congruency, thereby sort of justifying why these two symbols look like almost the same.